But can we not get too ridiculous about this stuff? You've now got some mental health advocates are saying that a tax should be imposed on social media companies like the excise on tobacco. Now, they argue that the funds raised from taxing social media companies could then be used to fund mental health care to help people cope with some of the issues being caused by these platforms. The executive director of the Black Dog Institute, for instance, says if we look at various public health problems, once we understood that cigarettes imposed on our health system, we imposed a tax on cigarette companies to pay for that. OK, I get where they're going, Evelyn, but I think there's a link missing in the middle here. We have a, a massive mental health problem in this country and across the rest of the Western world at the moment. Social media exacerbates that, but it's not the cause of it. You know, I think they discredit the cause by saying, well, we should have a, a tobacco-style tax on social media companies for the damage they have caused. And please. Yeah, look, the government will always find a reason to take people's money. And this is absolutely no different. And, you know, this is the inevitable consequence of asking the government to look after our health for us. You know, they feel like they have the responsibility. We have given them the responsibility. So they, you know, they can pull these ones on us and go, well, you know, we are in charge of your health. We have a public health system, therefore A, B, C and D. But something like this and even suggesting something like this is such an absurd precedent that it would set. I mean, what about, you know, my next door neighbour or, you know, the person down the road who feeds their kids too many cheeseburgers or lets them have too much time on an iPad? Sure, I think those things are bad. But imagine the precedent, like, where does it end when you ask or invite the government to take your personal responsibility, like the possibilities are endless. And I don't buy for a second that these people care about children's health. I don't think that our health system really does. I mean, look at the, what they're doing around children and transgenderism. I mean, sh that should in itself go, they don't, obviously don't really care about health. Look about what they did to the Australian public during COVID. Clearly, they don't care about our health. They locked us up for almost a year in total. They, we weren't allowed no, to right. exercise. Good, we weren't no, allowed good. to do, well, you know, you, all these things. Well, you want to no. talk about mental health. I mean, you, you look at the stats, it's, particularly on kids after I know. COVID, it's just, there was a five-year-old in Victoria who called the help the, the suicide helpline like a five-year-old like that's absurd and I don't even know how a five-year-old could do that but that's beside the point the fact that that's Too even happening <laughs> in our country is is nuts but you know I think we, we've known the dangers of junk food for such a long time we've known the dangers of the internet for such a long time why are we all of a sudden in the hot topic of children in harm on the internet, social media, now we're going to tax. There is such a hot topic at the moment and it's all coming at the same time. The misinformation, disinformation bill is coming out. It's all coming when they're trying to ban kids from, you know, accessing social media. I think it actually has nothing to do with the kids and I think the government are using this as an opportunity, as a pretext to introduce digital identity, to well, introduce yeah. control, <laughs> it's all to been, invade I further think, into I, but, but, our privacy. There is definitely one, one time. But, but they, we're Surely only just this discovering discredits, how. This discredits the argument, doesn't it, Joe? Like, come on, a tax on social media companies. There is a legitimate discussion to be had about the damage caused by social media to children. Yes. But it's getting and, a and, bit and it's, getting, in, it, it's, it's getting to the point where it's almost beyond an argument. I mean, we know now, we haven't... We, we're only just realising the, the harm that social media is having on kids. Um, we are seeing where there has been a phone ban, the first ever phone ban in schools, where it has had a massive impact on, on students' wellbeing. There's been... cut. Uh, cuts to bullying, an increase in outdoor play, all the stuff that everyone on this panel should love. So I don't think that's beyond it. What well, we I know that about junk food at McDonald's. That's too. right. And, and, We're going to start but, legislating but same, that. Well, they the want tax. But the they do. They do. That's right. The same. The same people often will say, "Well, we should have a tax on sugary drinks." drinks and we should Where have a tax does it end, on though? It's, junk food. It's that's right. a very well, slippery slope. The difference is. At, you can at least put a tax on a product that someone is paying money for. I don't understand how you tax a platform that people are using for free unless you're having a differing rate of Corporate company tax, tax yeah. for social media companies and that and then do you have a sort of you know do you, do you have a sort of like a healthy food pyramid of you know with Elon Musk's x up here and it, it pays 35 cents in the dollar and Facebook's pretty bad but not quite as bad LinkedIn so, down the very bottom yeah, that's right that's right yes, I, I put you know, LinkedIn yeah, Instagram yeah, okay, so I like what Update this person, the CV. I like what this person's saying I don't think he's wrong about um, it, it being um, 
it being incredibly harmful and it's very clear and I've, I've done work. But I think there's a huge difference between raising awareness of that and, and promoting um, and educating people on the dangers of social media. It's very different to then legislating it and no, entering well, people's no, homes no, no, but, and parenting. But, but, but let's be clear, this isn't the government proposing this. This is a... But the government will no, get involved. No, That's no, How no, else sorry, do they sorry, police sorry, sorry, this? Sorry. This is the Black Dog Institute. This is an independent research yes. uh, uh, mental health body that's doing this. And, you know, as, as someone that used to write op-eds, and Caleb can appreciate this, someone that writes op-eds, half of the issue and half the challenge is to get people talking about the problem. And in that case, this is a great op-ed because we're all sitting here, you know, talking about should we have a, a tax, should we not? Of course, Joe's absolutely right, you're absolutely right. Of course we're not going to have a tax on this tomorrow. How do you, how do you levy it? Who pays it? Where does it go? I mean, it's a pretext, it, though, for legislating banning children and entering the parenting spectrum. Sure, but, but, it's no, no, very but dangerous. It, but, if, but if we want to have a conversation about that, let's let's have a conversation about that. And, you know, I, I think that's a healthy debate. Like, the New South Wales government's about to have a social media summit, summit. in a couple of weeks or, or months <clears throat> where that very issue will be talked about. But let's have that conversation. I, I'm fine to have that conversation the, if we want to talk about it. The you problem know, is... I think the, kids should be restricted in their access to, to social media. But that should come from parents. It shouldn't come from the government. And I think governments always tend to grow. Look at a history book. Governments always grow. They take more than they ever give back. And we keep giving government these responsibilities. And if we're having these conversations, we have to be able to read through the fine print. And the fine print here is, like, coming across, oh, we're, we're doing this to prevent harm. We're doing this to protect no, the no, children. That, when That's a fact. That's, that's, that's it's total crap. It's but government it's, it's, it's getting control. tax. I mean, you, once you levy a tax, you're never going to take it away. But I, I'm interested because you do research in terms yeah. of AI, Natalia, and, and you would come across data and whatever I assume that relates to children and technology, etc. What's your reading yeah, of all look, of this? Look, um, my reading is that government is way behind on what's going on with social media use and they completely miss the fundamental mental intergenerational change on how children and young adults consume news media and entertainment. So 38% of millennials actually read and get the news from TikTok, Instagram, you name it, not even the online version of newspaper. So you cannot just ban it or tax it because it's part of their lives. While boomers are sitting there thinking, we regulate it. <laughs> Sorry, are you a boomer? No! How dare you! I thought you were both laughing at boomers together. Hang on, you might, you might need to move a bit this yeah. way. <laughs> I'm Generation X, so we're the generation that does everything and doesn't complain. <laughs> you might have bugged a few things up as well. Nah, it's all fine. You just where, where you were, where you were. What? Go on. Um, yeah, and they, they don't see, they still go and watch TV. They regulated the television very well and they sit quietly and peacefully thinking that's all done. No, those regulations should be there. It shouldn't be a ban or a tax. We should t compare this classification we have on TV about the gender, the age, the time, the whatever, when you're allowed to watch what at what age. Which is and an advisory system as opposed exactly. to uh, an actual, actual and ban. I'm not sure, I, I don't understand why that's not implemented in, in, uh, in the social media space because that's exactly how young kids, see, uh, actually 16 to 24-year-olds, well, you're a bit older. I've, I've surpassed that. <laughs> <laughs> Half of them you use internet to get the TikToks mm. and Instagrams yeah. to get their news. And what are we trying to achieve here? I don't know. To uh, cut them off completely from I all think well, that I, they I think are. It's a little bit scary in and of itself that that's the only place they get their news from. <laughs>